prior to the 19th century. All carpenter planes consisted of a blade embedded in a wooden body. Beginning in the middle of the century, manufacturers began making planes with metal bodies. Many of which were patented in the United States. We have six examples here. The first was patented by William Loughborough of New York in 1854, which makes it one of the oldest patented iron planes. The second plane is an example of a scraper. This particular scraper was patented in 1874 by a couple of guys from Buchanan, Michigan and manufactured by the Eclipse Plane Company of Ohio. This is an example of Oral Chaplin's 1872 patent. The blade adjustment mechanism, which used a rack and pinion to set the depth of the cutter, was used by the Tower and Lion Company of New York in a wide variety of planes. What makes this one very rare is that it is a number two size. Pattern makers generally had need of planes with convex soles that would cut hollows or semicircular grooves in wood of different diameters. This was usually accomplished by having a plain body with a number of interchangeable soles with different profiles. This is an example of an adjustable plane with a sole comprised of slats that could be moved or adjusted to create a sole with different profiles without the need for interchangeable soles. This gizmo, which was patented in 1871 by Ellis Morris of Canton, Ohio, uses a scissors-type mechanism to set the distance of the fence. This is an example of the number 41 plane, which is made of cast iron. Other models had different configurations, and some of them were made of gunmetal. This is a very rare example of a Type 1, which has been nicknamed the hook nose due to the small hook in the frame, which appears to have been purely decorative. This particular example also comes with a complete set of its original cutters. Plow planes tended to be among the most elaborately decorated and costly planes in a carpenter's toolkit. We have three examples here. The first is an example of a manual carpenter's 1838 patent one of the earliest known plane patents. Early plow planes used sliding arms that were locked with wedges or thumb screws, but Carpenter pioneered the use of arms with a screw thread that could be locked in place with nuts. All later plow planes following Carpenter are screw arm planes. This rosewood plow plane by the Greenfield Tool Company of Connecticut, in addition to being ivory tipped, has locking arms comprised of a layer of ivory between two layers of boxwood. Many plow planes have a strip of harder wood, sometimes even metal, along the edge of the fence to keep it from wearing out and becoming uneven. Because boxwood was usually used for this purpose, this is known as boxing. This plane, however, uses three dovetailed bone inserts for this purpose. In addition, there are bone inserts on the underside of the fence surrounding the screw heads that hold the fence to the shoulder. One of the most important surveying tools is the sighting compass. This is an example by Benjamin Rittenhouse, a leading instrument maker of the post-revolutionary period. One of the critical components of a surveyor's compass, as distinguished from an ordinary compass, is a set of sights. Most compasses, as with the Rittenhouse compass we just saw, use what are called vanes for this purpose tall brass structures that are attached on either side of the compass with a siding slit up the middle. This compass, by New York maker Edmund Brown, uses a more sophisticated siding system comprised of a telescope mounted in place of one of the vanes. This compass combines the siding features of the last two we looked at. It has a basic set of siding vanes, but it also comes with an optional siding telescope This is called a bow drill. These were mostly used by jewelers, by other fine craftsmen who felt that this gave them more control than something like a brace and bit. This is signed by Julius Erlinson. Julius and his father, Adolf Erlinson, were European immigrants who set themselves up in New York making high quality tools that were largely used in the piano industry.
Here we have an example of a wooden jointer plane, which has been very elaborately carved with a patriotic theme. Along this side, you can see George Washington, Lady Liberty, another heroic figure blowing a trumpet, whoever that might be. And on this side, we have a fierce American eagle with the words E Pluribus Unum.